Welcome back to part two of this series. And if you're watching this without having watched part one, that's fine, because in this lesson, we'll look at several different types of questions related to this concept, some of which that have already been covered in part one and several new ones as well. The complete list is shown on your screen. As always, let's start with a bit of theory. Any occurrence for which the outcome is uncertain is called an experiment. The set of all possible outcomes of an experiment is the sample space of that experiment, and that's denoted by the letter S. An event denoted by E is a subcollection or subset of a sample space. Theoretical probability applies to situations in which the sample space only contains equally likely outcomes, all of which are known. If an event E has equally likely outcomes and its sample space S has equally likely outcomes, and notice how they're denoted, the theoretical probability is equal to the number of outcomes in event B over the number of outcomes in sample space S. And one final thing, the sum of the theoretical probabilities of all possible outcomes in a sample space is always equal to one. The first question reads, a die is rolled. Find the probability of getting a number greater than four. So the sample space of equally likely outcomes is represented as S is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, assuming that the die is six sides. And the event of getting a number greater than 4 can be represented as E is equal to 5 and 6. Using the formula shown here, we can write down 2, because there are two events, over a total of 6 the probability of E is equal to one third. Now what if we wanted to know the event that a probability E will not occur? In this case, what we will do is subtract the probability of E from one, and that's represented right here. With that being said, question two reads, if one person is randomly selected from the world population represented by the figure, find the probability that the person does not live in North America express the probability as a simplified fraction and as a decimal rounded to the nearest thousandths. We know that the population of North America is 550 million of the entire world. And if we add all of these numbers up, you'll end up with 7,000 million or 7 billion. So I'll take 7,000 million and the population of North America is 550 million the whole world will be represented as one minus the events, which in our case is the North American population. To find the answer here, of course, we can use our calculator or you can do it manually. I prefer my calculator because it's fast and by now you should know how to add and subtract fractions. We end up with 129 over 140. And if we want this as a decimal, we click this button, we end up with 0 0.9214. The thousands is right here, and the first discarded number is everything after this four. So we have 0 0.921 as a decimal. And if we want this as a percentage, we'll multiply this by 100. So we can say that the likelihood of choosing a random person around the globe that's not North American is 92.1%. Let's continue. If it is possible for any two events, let's say A and B, to occur simultaneously, they are said to be mutually exclusive. If A and B are mutually exclusive events, then we can write it out as the probability of A plus the probability of B. And using set notation, we write down the probability of A, and this symbol is union, B. So let's go ahead and do a question related to this. If you roll a single six-sided die, what is the probability of getting either a four or a five? Now, we know that the probability of getting a four is one-sixth, and the probability of getting a five is also one-sixth. So we'll take the probability, the probability of the first event, let's call it A, and the probability of the second event, let's call it B, and we add them up. Adding fractions with the same denominator is easy. We just add the numerators. And that means there is one-third the chance of getting either A or B. Next, if A and B are not mutually exclusive events, then we can say that the probability of A or B is equal to, this part remains unchanged from what we had above, minus the probability of A and B. So let's do a question related to this. 
If one person is randomly selected from the population represented in the table, find the probability that the person is married or female. So this column represents married and this row represents female. We'll write down P married or female is equal to the probability of A. So we'll call this A and we'll call this B. The probability of being married is 130 out of 242. That's the first one. We're looking at this. And now the probability of being female is 124 out of 242. And we'll subtract this by 65, being married and female. So 65 over 242, you should end up with 189 over 242. 189 over 242, and as a percentage, that is approximately equal to 0 0.78. We can stop writing after this 8, and we can say 0 0.78 approximately. Finally, two events are independent events if the occurrence of either of them has no effect on the probability of the other. If A and B are independent events, we would write down A and B is equal to, and we multiply the probability of A times the probability of B. The question for this is, find the probability of a family having four boys in a row. Now there's always an equal likelihood of either gender, male or female. So we can write down, there's half chance in the first pregnancy, another half chance in the second, half chance in the third, and half chance in the fourth. And the probability of this happening is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. And there you have it. That is how to calculate theoretical probability.